welcome you to our 9 o'clock service here at MCCDC. We are so glad you're here with us. And those of you who are tuning in online or either at another time on demand, we're gl so glad you're here with us as well. We're going to start by singing a chorus, Jehovah Jireh, my provider, God's grace is sufficient for me. It's a old song from the 70s, and I know we used to sing it in youth group when I was in um, Methodist youth group, and maybe you did too. So um, Jehovah Jireh, it's one of those easy songs. Once you hear it a couple times, you'll know it. So just sing along with me if you can. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, God's grace is sufficient for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, God's grace is sufficient for me. My God shall supply all my needs according to God's riches and glory. God will give the angels charge over me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, God's grace is sufficient for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, God's grace is sufficient for me. My God shall supply all my needs according to God's riches and glory. God will give the angels charge over me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. Good day, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to worship at Metropolitan Community Church of Washington, D.C. My name is Reverend Kathy Alexander. I'm the associate path, uh, pastor, and I would bring you welcome and greetings. Greetings from our senior pastor, Reverend Dwayne Johnson. He's on retreat this week, and so we wish him not only happy birthday, but we wish him rest and peace and joy. Whenever you are joining us, whether you're in the sanctuary, whether you are online, or whether you're joining us weeks and years from today, you are in the right place to worship your God. Here at MCCDC, we welcome participation. And so during our communion time, we ask that you gather elements for communion. You can use what you have at home. And this open table is a table of participation. In order to build an altar, you can light a candle, you can have some greenery around you. However, we'll set the sacred stage for where you are. We say welcome. Good morning. I am Dr. Teresa Tigert. I am your ministry intern here at MCCDC, and I also want to welcome you. I am so glad that you're here with us in the house, and for those of you that are watching us online, we are so glad that you are here this morning. As part of the uh, welcome this morning, I want to invite you to be a part of our weekly prayer call, Mondays through Saturdays from noon to 1230. Just join us. Uh, you can get to the link through our mccdc.com events page. Just uh, reach out and join us in prayer. Also on Thursday nights at 7 p.m., we have Barnabas Culture. Check your e-blast, you'll find the link there. I've put a new link out there, hopefully. You won't have any problems getting to it. If you do, please email me at preachertigert at gmail.com and we will make whatever arrangements need to be made to get you on the link. Also coming up, I want you to think about supporting Susan B. Coleman's Walk for the Cure. It's coming up on September the 18th and I hope that you will uh, be a part of that and support those of us who are, are walking for that. Again, welcome. And 
we're going to continue worship by singing one of my favorite hymns. You know, we just started our series, Songs of Our Souls. So this is one of the songs of my soul, one of, one of my grandma's favorites too. Great is your faithfulness. time in our service where we pray for our communities and I just uh, pray that you would just join me as we ask our God to reach around the world where we can't reach let us pray Lord God we just thank you that you are God over all that you are sovereign and that you see what goes on in the world and Lord I just lift up the world to you today Lord the drought that's going on in Europe the wars in Ukraine, the dozens that were killed in the church in Egypt. Oh, Lord God, I just reach out for them, and I ask you to bring peace, and I ask you to bring healing. Lord, for those that are suffering with these pandemics, Lord, I speak healing and peace into their situation. And I just pray that you would just heal by your power, by your mercy, by your grace. And Lord, I lift up our MCC families all around the world and especially here at home at MCCDC. And Lord, I just pray that you would meet their needs right where they are, wherever they are, whether they're at home, whether they're in a hospital, wherever they are, you are greater than their need. And I just pray that you would reach out right now. And by faith, I just believe for them that you will heal them according to your grace and your mercy. 
And we just offer all of this to you in prayer. And we thank you that we have the opportunity to lift up one another and to pray for one another. And we just give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in all your many and holy names, and especially in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Welcome. During this time, this season of our souls, our songs, I wanted to especially invite one of our longest members of MCCDC, Cecilia Hayden Smith, to share just a little bit with us about how has your engagement with MCCDC strengthened your faith? Yes. Yes, good morning. Uh, this is Mama C. <laughs> and I um, think I, she just gave me what I was supposed to do when I came in. And what I thought about is that I hadn't been in a church except for a wedding or a funeral for 20 years. And I, of course, a young lady invited me to her to choir. So who just follow right on by like a little puppy? <laughs> And so once I got here, I got to tell you about the first time I came. We was at uh, M Street. M Street. And um, what happened was uh, I'm in a 12-step program, and when I opened the door, finally, after I had walked around about three times, this um, gentleman came and got me and took me inside. And when I got inside, I was like paralyzed. But then right, God is so good because right across from the door was this guy I knew in 12-step program. I hit the thing, almost sat in his lap, and, <laughs> and almost uh, fell in the floor. So that was my introduction to MCCBC. And how has your faith grown? My faith is tremendous because when I came here, I didn't believe there was a God that worked. I, I was, I'm blind in one eye, and I've always been overweight, and so I just thought he was the meanest God, and he didn't like black people. Of course, that was my first question my, in my mind, and if he did, he definitely didn't like lesbians. So <laughs> I was, just had a lot of stuff going on in my brain, but as the years have passed, this is my heart. The Lord is my heart. Jesus Christ is my heart. Um, all these people in my life today, on my heart, including the people at MCCDC. I love you, and I volunteer to do everything because I know that's my way of showing God that I appreciate him. And one more thing I need to say. <laughs> one more thing I need to say. When my faith gets low, like, you know, my, my, my wife left me, and but be back together, and we're friends, and that's good. But it took me a year to go into a P -A P -I -W. I'm glad I'm not going now. They're poisoning people or whatever over there. <laughs> but anyway, to make a long story short, I know my place is with Jesus in his house. And then I have to throw a little bit in about tithes. I didn't want to give my money to any organized church religious, so I didn't. And then as I grew, because Esther pay her tithes every week, no matter what it is that she can afford. And I, she just kind of taught me. She didn't ever say, you need to pay tithes, like I tell Angela. And <laughs> tell your business. <laughs> yes, your I business. will. Tell your business. Yeah, okay. But I do, I did, and I do love my people here. And my Reverend Kathy is my heart. And my pastor, Dwayne, is also there. I hope he's having a nice little time out because he needs it. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. We each have a story to tell. We each have a journey. No matter where you are in time on this planet, we each have a story to tell. God is a faithful God. There are many ways that you can give. There's a QR code that will appear on your screen. You can go to mccdc.com 
There's a QR code in the sanctuary. There's a, a tablet kiosk in the back. That's how you can give. These are the stories of why to give to MCCDC, the ministries here that you make happen. Thank you. And thank you, Cecilia Hayden-Smith. Thank you for all the things you bless us with, our families, our provisions, whatever it is that we have need of, you are our God, you are our provider, you are Jehovah Jireh, and we are so grateful for how you provide for every need. Bless each one that, that is part of this ministry of giving. Thank you for them, Lord, and I just pray multiple blessings back on them for their faithfulness. And we just give you the glory, honor, and praise in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Contemporary reading from Litany from Below. I ask these things by Claudio Colvinhoe. God, I ask that you stabilize the market, that you hold the powerful to their word. I ask that you that you fortitude us in community, that you make us out of many. One, I ask that you provide us tools, that you give us what we need to steward and tilt. I ask that you relieve us of fatigue, that you grow our strength and resolve. I ask these things and your Christ child's name, amen. Our second reading is coming from Hebrews, chapter 11, verses one and two, 29 through 40, Common English Bible. Faith is the reality of what we hope for, the proof of what we don't see. The elders in the past were approved because they showed faith. By faith, the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea as if they were on dry land. But when they tried it, they were drowned. By faith, Jericho's wall after the people marched around for seven days. By faith, the prostitute 
wasn't killed with the others because she welcomed the spy in peace. What more can I say? I would run out of time if I told you about Gillian, Bacharach, Samson, Johannathan, David, Samuel, and the prophet. Through faith, they conquered kingdom, brought about justice, realizing promises. Shut the mouth of the lion, put out raging fires, escape from the the edge of a sword. Sounds strength and weakness, mighty in war, and walt armies. Women receive back their death, dead by resurrection. Others were tortured and refused to be released so they could gain a better resurrection. But other experience torture in the public they were even put in chains and in prison. They were stoned to death. They were cut in two. And they died by being murdered by swords. They went around wearing the skins of sheep and goats, needy, oppressed, and mistreated. The world didn't deserve that. They wandered around in the desert, mountains, caves, holes in the ground. Other people did not receive what was promised. Though they were given approval for their faith, God provides some things better for others that couldn't be made perfect without us. Amen. If you see the morning rising gently on your fields, if the wind blows softly on your face If the sunset lingers while cathedral bells peal And the moon has risen to her place You can thank Jehovah for the things that God has done and thank God for the things God's yet to do. And if you find a love that's tender, if you find someone who's true, thank the Lord. God's been doubly good to you. If you look in the mirror at the end of a hard day and you know in your heart you have not lied if you gave love freely if you've earned an honest wage and if you've got Jesus by your side you can Jehovah for the things that God has done and thank him for the things he's yet to do and if you find a love that's tender if you find someone who's true thank the Lord God's been doubly good to you you can thank Jehovah for the things that God has done. And thank God for the things God's yet to do. And if you find a love that's tender, if you find someone who's true, thank the Lord. God's been doubly good to you. 
Thank the Lord, God's been doubly good to you. Daniel, can we show Daniel some love as well? God has been doubly, triply, quadruply. What's the fifth? Quintuply, octuply, good to all of us. God has a way about things, doesn't God? Has that been your experience? We hope so. Our theme for this period of time is Songs of Our Souls. The writer of the book of Hebrews tells us that the threads of faith are woven throughout the blanket of time by expert weavers of faith. So what is faith? Certainly one place to start is the Oxford Dictionary definition, which says that it is trust in somebody's ability or knowledge, trust that somebody or something will do what has been promised. The Hebrews 11.1 1 definition of faith frames it in a spiritual context. And here are some definition of faith from several different translations. One says, the reality of what we hope for, the proof of what we don't see, the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, the things that gives substance to our hopes and makes us certain of the realities that we do not yet see. Only faith can guarantee the blessings that we hope for or prove the existence of the realities that at present remain unseen. Being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. And finally, one says, the confident assurance that what we hope for is waiting for us even though we cannot see it up ahead. The writer then goes on to give examples of people who were in their hall, their hall of fame of faith. We have the blessings and examples to look at the actions of some of those heroes and heroes of faith. Some are mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11, some are mentioned in our own history books, and some are from our own lives. Biblical figures like Abraham and Sarah, Rahab, David, and Moses. Or people in history like Gandhi and Mother Teresa and Martin Luther King and Mary McLeod Bethune and Malala Yousafzai. Or even people from our own families, and you can fill in the blanks there, of those names. Whatever their accomplishments because of their faith, one thing all of these people have in common is their humanity. While they strove for something better, they were and are flawed and scarred individuals just like we are. And yet they, like we, can be a strong person of faith, spirit, and justice in the midst of all of that. What is your reality being a person of faith? In the Gospels, it said that Jesus said, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, that you can say to the mountain, move from there to here, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Nothing will be impossible for you. Now, he did not say that nothing would not be difficult for you. He said nothing would not be, nothing will be impossible for you. And I do think about some other difficult circumstances that we as people of faith face. We can pray that God will keep an individual from dying, yet we can have the confident assurance that God is present with us, holding our hearts when they do. We can pray that God deliver us from a bad situation, and we can have faith that God is with us as we move to be responsible with our own lives and with the lives of others. We can pray for wars to cease 
and have the confident assurance that God will ultimately prevail over the consequences of human greed, lust for power, oppression, and misuse of authority. For some of us, the reality is, yes, life has its joyful times and the reality that life also has its excruciatingly difficult times. We hurt, we grieve, we cry, we dance, we hope, we dream, we have faith. Faith, that confident assurance that God is with us. There was a song first published in 1956, which according to the Episcopal Diocese of Washington State, became an immensely popular hymn, much to the surprise of its author, Albert A. Goodson. The lyrics affirm God's saving power in the past, as well as gives hope for the future. The message that with confidence in the Lord's help, we can move forward and face whatever lies ahead of us. That message is enduring and is, is important for today as well, I believe. This song has been a foundational staple of MCCDC throughout our own history as well. One verse says, don't be discouraged when troubles come your way. God will bear your, all your burdens and God will turn your night to day. And perhaps you're more familiar with the chorus that says, We've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in God's holy word. God's never failed us yet. Oh, can't turn around. We've come this far by faith. This faith, this strongly held conviction that God will ultimately prevail has tangible results and it has tangible repercussions. Hebrews 11, 33 through 38 speaks further about these people of faith. Through faith, they conquered kingdoms, brought about justice, realized promises, shut the mouths of lions. I think we have some lions in our own day and age, do we not? That need their mouths shut. These people put out raging fires. They escaped from the edge of the sword. They found strength in weakness. They were mighty in war and they routed armies. Families received back their dead by resurrection. There's more to the story. Others were tortured and refused to be released so that they could gain a better resurrection. But others experienced public torture by being taunted and whipped. They were put in chains and they were put in prison. They were stoned to death, they were cut in two, and they died by being murdered with swords. They went around wearing skins of sheep and goats, needy, oppressed and mistreated. The world did not deserve them. We say, gee, Reverend Kathy, why are you talking about that? Well, let me tell you, let me ask you, has your reputation or your position ever been maligned or stoned to death with language from your detractors because of your faith or your strongly held conviction? Have you ever experienced the death of a dream or perhaps the death of something you really, really put your work into? To have doors closed, perhaps to have God give other dreams and open other doors and windows. Who or what do you have faith in? In this current reality, can you trust that God will provide and prevail? Like those heroes of faith, you can know that God is journeying with you. I believe the songs of our souls and prayers are necessary parts of our spiritual development, our heart development, and our nourishment. And when the rubber of our spiritual sneakers meets the road of our desire to do better and to be better and to grow, to meet hardship, grief, and brokenness, we can continuously 
or can we continuously attend to our responses as individuals and as an MCCDC family and community of faith? We can have faith that God will provide and we can engage, get involved and active in ensuring that this community continues for another 51 years. We can share our church and spiritual experiences with others, especially online. We can go to the grocery store or coffee shop or restaurant and live out our values daily as we interact with other people. There are some, however, in the U.S. that have faith in persons or systems that incite violence against people they believe are not like them or who might have different ideology or theology or worldviews. The God of the understanding of some in our society is a vengeful, angry, condemning God. That worldview is interpreted and often carried out as angry, violent acts rather than peaceful, lawful voicing of differences. Many times the laws and scriptures are weaponized against those on the margins of many communities. What do we as people of faith do when we're faced with these circumstances? We pray, yes, we have faith, yes, in the God of our understanding. We act in ways that God places on each of our hearts individually and on our hearts as a community of faith. We resist. We treat people with respect. We try our best not to objectify people or put people down. And I encourage us to educate ourselves on how to recognize and respond to and resist the things that tear us down. Things like microaggressions, horizontal racism, internalized and externalized homophobia and transphobia, internal and external oppression. And if these, any of these words are new to you or you don't know what they mean, please email me and I'd be happy to have a conversation with you. I would love to. There are yet others today who have lost faith in organized religion. They've been damned and burned and othered from the pulpit to the pew and determined to live their lives without religion. Others have determined that they are spiritual and not religious because the institution of church and religion have been hurtful or hard to understand. What can we do to offer an invitation to relationship with God and community over a cup of coffee, over a meal? What is the impact of our faith on the community around us in the Shaw neighborhood and wherever you live? Our impact as a church community of faith and around us as individuals. Are the hungry fed? Can people find a spiritual home to be respected, to be themselves? Is there a place to be of service to God using your gifts in this community and beyond? Your heart, your home, and your MCCDC home can be such a place. What really happens when the community's efforts in faith shows up and is sustained over time? Something changes. Something has the opportunity to grow. MCCDC has been present as a faith community for over 51 years. And with your continued engagement in ministries of MCCDC, God will continue to use this community, each of us, to preach a message of love and acceptance into the future. It takes all of us to do that. The entire book of Hebrews encourages us to take in our current reality and in faith balance it with the ultimate reality of trusting God will prevail. That very message is intertwined into this next song. The Schmoop University Guide speaks to this idea, and it says, there's a bit of both Booker T. Washington and W.E.B. Du Bois in this song, and it's entirely possible that the song has remained, po has remained popular for over a century because it speaks to people advocating different approaches and methods to freedom. Steeped in religious expression, the song is a demand for faith aware of history as it invokes images of the past, while at the same time acknowledging signs of progress. 
It survives as an anthem because it conjures up the right mix of thinking, feeling, and remembering. And it suggests that people should be joyful and angry, grateful for the change that has already occurred, yet mindful that the struggle is not over. And that song says, lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing arise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of a new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. The last verse says, God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on the way, thou who has by thy might led us into the light, keep us forever on the path we pray, lest our feet stray from the places, our God, where we met you, lest our hearts drunk with the wine of the world we forget you, shadowed beneath your hand. May we forever stand true to our God, true to our native land. Do we trust that our God will provide what we need? Faith is the reality of things hoped for, the proof of what we don't yet see. The elders in the past were approved because they showed faith. We today can be in deep relationship with the God of our understanding and our community through engagement, through participation, through our commitment to help one another. Determine how you can best engage with this community. There are many opportunities to get engaged. This final contemporary song encourages us to know that God, Jaira, our provider, is encouraged with us in relationship. We can count on God through our faith.
don't want to forget how I feel right now on the mountaintop I can see so clear what it's all about stay by my side when the sun goes down don't want to forget how I feel right now to this point in our service, we come to the communion table, and Christ invites all of us to come. Christ said if we would come, he would turn none of us away. This is the Lord's table. Everyone is welcome. In all of our MCC churches, you don't have to be a member of this church or of any church. We just ask you right now to find something, whether you're at home, if you're in the house, we have communion cups for you. But it doesn't matter what you have, just come with what you have. Let's pray. Lord, we just ask you to take our gifts, take these common things that we bring to you, and to make them what you'd have them to be. 
We offer them to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus was sitting with his disciples before he was betrayed, and he took bread. It's just common things, but he took bread, and he shared it with them, and he broke it, and he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. And when the meal had ended, Jesus took the cup, he blessed it, and he gave it to those who were present with him, saying, this is the cup of my love, the cup of the new and the everlasting covenant poured out for you. When you drink from this cup, remember me. I invite us all to receive the elements, the bread and the cup. <clears throat> Thank you, God, for your blessings, for your provisions, for you indeed are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Amen. And now I invite us to whatever way is sacred for you in the silence of your heart, in sign, in song, to share the prayer that Jesus teaches. Our Creator, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. from this place, knowing that God, Jehovah, is your provider. Trust and have faith that God will come through for you. We pray, we obey, we put our step, and we put our hands. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.